Hello, I'm Dimiake Mwakalielia. This is In Focus. Vincent Makori is off today. Now, officials in southern Sudan say a key presidential candidate in upcoming elections is withdrawing from the race. Officials from the former rebel group, the, Su the Sudan People's Liberation Movement, says their candidate, Yarsir Aman, has pulled out of the election. Aman and party officials say the move is necessary because of electoral irregularities and continued conflict in Darfur. Aman was seen as one of the favorites to compete with incumbent President Omar al-Bashir in the national vote, which begins April 11th. Now, on Tuesday, the International Crisis Group accused Sudan's ruling National Congress Party of trying to rig the elections. The Brussels-based group was especially critical of the electoral process in Darfur. The Darfuri vote is critical because nearly 20% of Sudan's Sudanese li uh, citizens live in the region. And joining me now to help us better understand the situation in Darfur is UN Joint Special Representative for the African Union, United Nations Peacekeeping Mission to Darfur, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. Mr. Gambari, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show with us today. Dimyaki, thank you very much for having me on. Thank you so much. Of course, uh, we've already talked about the significance of these elections, the first in 24 years for Sudan. Yet, just literally less than two weeks before the elections happen, you have the SPLM pulling out, and you have also the opposition northerners' parties also boycotting or debating pulling out if they are not postponed. What do you make of uh, this development and its threat really to the elections? Well, you know, politics is never very neat. Uh, and this is about politics. Uh, what I know is that uh, several conversations are going on to see if uh, the disagreements can, in fact, be resolved. Because everybody understands the importance of this election. As you know, it's not just about choosing a president, but also for the first time, the governors of states and provinces will be chosen. For example, in Darfur, for the first time, there will be uh, the election of uh, or the choice of a governor uh, known as the Wali. 67.5% of eligible voters did register to vote in this election. Multiple candidates for elections at the, um, at the state and provincial and local level. So this tremendous opportunity, not to mention the fact that uh, this election is a prelude to the referendum under the CPA. So if there are no elections, then the, the whole process of uh, the referendum, uh, which will enable the South to, to decide whether to stay within the union or not, uh, that might very well be jeopardized. Okay, well, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the referendum later, but right now as we speak, of course, your mandate to the UN is Darfur specifically, and we know that even there, there are potential problems ahead of these elections, uh, at least peace deals that are not being fulfilled, as was expected with, uh, of course, GEM, the Justice, for Equal, uh, the Justice and Equality Movement, and also the Liberation and Justice Movement. What can you tell us about the stumbling blocks in that and the threat they pose to these elections? Well, the, the threats are, are real, but I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that they may not be uh, insurmountable if the political will is there to try to address some of the concerns of the opposition. Uh, as you know, um, we, UNAMID is a, a joint African Union and UNF force on the ground, and we assisted the process of registration, and we stand ready to also provide logistic and other support for the uh, for the election should it take place. Uh, you recall, you said rightly that uh, the political environment is not uh, uh, the best because there's still no peace agreement even for us as peacemakers to peacekeepers to keep. But it, it appears as if hope was rising in Doha with the conclusion of the framework agreement between the government of Sudan and JM and uh, the similar thing with the LJM. In fact, they've gone. LGM went a step further by signing um, uh, a ceasefire agreement. So, I mean, there are some positive elements, but still a number of difficulties now. It's up to the political parties, up to the government, with the help of the international community and the African Union to try to help resolve some of these challenges. I'm going to be speaking shortly with Louis Abo, who is the, uh, uh, the president of the ICG that wrote this report that is, uh, identifies some of the concerns. And, uh, and we'll see what we can do all together to support the process should it go right ahead. Now, um, Mr. Gambari, you talked earlier about the referendum and also, of course, that's really the key goal following these elections. The political parties that are threatening to boycott are calling for an even playing field. They're saying that they, they don't have access to the media. They're saying that the, the, the legislation in elections is biased. Do you think this can be uh, leveled out or achieved if the, if the elections are actually postponed until November, which is the date that these opposition parties want? 
Well, on my part, as you know, uh, Demiake, I am not actually responsible for these broader national questions. I have uh, a colleague, Menkerios, who is the Secretary General Special Representative and Head of the United Nations Mission in Sudan, that has to address this, uh, the issue of referendum and, and even the post-referendum issue. Nonetheless, we work closely together because we realize that if these elections do not go ahead and uh, there is no political solution to the current impasse, it definitely will negatively affect uh, uh, the referendum, both the timing and, uh, uh, and the implications of, uh, uh, of the next steps. Because um, if these elections were to go ahead uh, peacefully and fairly, it would be a good trial run for the referendum, in my view, uh, and the lessons learned could be applied. But all these issues have to be resolved at okay. the political level by the key actors. Professor Ibrahim Gambari, we really appreciate your time with us today, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dimiyaki. Thank you.